Praise the Lord, everybody. So we're glad to be able to be here today to, uh, I look at it as a celebration because this was the day that Jesus paid the sin debt for all of humanity, not just for Americans, but for all the world. And uh, that's why the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So uh, we're going to talk about the crucifixion today. Uh, you that come here on a regular basis at Easter time, you know I always leave Jesus in the tomb today. Mm -hmm. And he gets out on Sunday. So Amen. if you want to be here for him getting out, you'll have to come Sunday. <laughs> Amen. But uh, I thank God for his presence in our life and uh, the privilege to be able to be his son and to know him in a personal way. And, you know, uh, I believe everybody here is probably saved, but if you're not, Today would be a good day to meet the Savior. Amen. Uh, he's, he's still on the throne. He's still doing what he does. and uh, So I'm not worried about what he does. Sometimes I'm worried about what we do, but I'm not worried about what he does. He is the King of kings, Lord of lords, and meets our needs every single day. Uh, if you could stand with me, please. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and get started here. Thank you for joining us on this Good Friday. Those of you that may be watching by Facebook today, we are so glad to have you with us as well, and we pray that you'll sense and feel the power and the presence of the Lord, because that's, that's really what we're about. It's not about show or anything like that. It's just about lifting up and glorifying Jesus. Father, I love you today. I'm certainly grateful, Lord, for the peace that I feel in my heart today. I thank you, Father, for the time, Father, I had with you this morning, and Father, the presence to Lord that I felt. I pray your blessing, Father, on this service today, that, Father, we would magnify and glorify your name, that you would be lifted high, Father, that we would, dear Lord, exalt your name and make you big, Lord, for certainly, Father, too many times, Father, we brought you down to a little uh, figurine on the dashboard of our car, our cross around our neck, but you're so big and so powerful, and so we trust you, Lord, to help us in every situation. I pray for those who might be hurting or sick or going through struggles. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus, you bless our sister there that Father lost her uncle this morning. I just pray in the name of Jesus that Father, you just give them comfort and Father, let them know, Father, as they told me that he had went home to be with you. So Lord, absent from the body, present with the Lord, I thank you for that. I pray for the Phillips family today, the passing Father of their dad. I pray that you just minister to their needs. Father, help us today to lift you high and glorify you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Everybody said together? Amen. 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 All right. Kind of a new song. Well, this is not kind of a new song for us. It is a new song for us. So uh, do us as we sing it, all right? Finding myself and a loss for words and a funny things. It's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say.
to it over the weekend when I, I was at a preacher's conference and I just thought, man, I, I want to learn that song. So I brought it here this morning. And Amen. I think we did okay. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Lord. God. Give God a hand and praise. We came for you. He's worthy. You probably know this song. It's been around for a long, long time. It's an old hymn called At the Cross. Uh, that he really paid. The Bible said we were not redeemed with such corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. And so it said, after he had given them the bread, he took the cup, and after he had supped, he gave it unto them, and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, or the new testament, that grace was going to come about. His blood was going to wash away every sin. And so when we partake of this today, we realize that 
that blood is still washing away sin. Amen. Today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to the Lord for the peace that He gives us when we know who we, what we know about who He is in our lives. And so, you bow your heads with us and ask Brother Joe to ask God's blessing on the on the. Dear Father, I want to thank you so much for the privilege of being here. Thank you. We're celebrating, Father God, the fact that you died in our place today. And you died as us and for us. I just want to give you all the glory, Father God, as we take this communion. But just remember and realize all that you have done, you're doing, and you're going to do in the future. We give you all the glory for it through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And I know some people say you've got to be a member. If you know Jesus, you're a member as far as I'm concerned. Amen. Go ahead and take communion all to you.
Wonderful. I'm so glad to have you here. Would you ask God's blessing on the bread, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon, Lord. We just thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you bless this bread. It's been broken, Lord. For us, Lord God. We thank you today, Lord. Just a few days, they waved palm trees and shouted Hosanna. And a few days later, they hand you to the cross. Lord, we just ask that you bless this time that we spend together. Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. We thank you and we praise you. Take the breath today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Worship Him. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord Jesus.
thank God for Calvary. Amen. crucifixion story and every year it's kind of like a, I've got like so many different notes from so many different places it's like which one do you choose and uh, this morning just, just in prayer last night with uh, sitting there at the dining room table I just started going over some of the things that uh, happened on that day it's, it's one of those days, and, and I've got stuff wrote down here, so don't beat up on me. I remember George Whitfield, he preached a sermon one time and never looked at anybody. He just kind of, he was almost blind. And so he just read his sermon, but the power and presence of God was so good that people thought they were dropping off into hell. And uh, I'm praying for one of those days, Kurt, where I preach, it's so Pure, I guess is about the best word to put it. I don't want to be strong or hot, but preach it so pure that you cannot sit and just think about other stuff. You know, well, uh, I got a roast cooking at home, or I've got, you know, I need to go home and cut my grass because it's growing. Uh, I pray you get your mind off all that stuff today and just try to center in on what. This day really represents what it means to us as children of God because without this day, we would not have our salvation. And I am, I am eternally grateful that Jesus was willing to go to the cross and to die in my place. As the song said, had it not been for the old rugged cross, I would forever be lost. So if you allow me to, I'm going to read a lot of scripture today, and uh, I think the scripture itself tells, depicts and tells the story the best. Um, I'm no scholar, that's for sure. I, but I, I've been to the school of neology. <coughs> what that is, that's where you get on your knees and you pray. And uh, I have had my DDHG, my double dose of the Holy Ghost. So. Uh, and my BA, I've been born again. You know, so I, I've got some, you know, letters behind my name. They don't mean anything to anybody but heaven. And that's okay, right? You know, it made news in heaven when I got saved. Right? All the angels rejoiced. They thought, well, there's one down there. You can just come in. I heard a guy say one time about the angel, angelic host, when God was creating all of the world, they were, as he put it, they were looking over if there is banisters in heaven. He was looking over the banisters of heaven. They were looking over the banisters of heaven. He said, I didn't know he was going to do that. When he spoke the worlds into existence. And I heard a recent message uh, from Carter Conlon. Just, and it really spoke to me how that there was the time when there was an uh, ask of a prophet or asked of a king that if he was going to do what he said he would do, uh, said, could you make the sundial go backwards? Anybody remember that story? You know, and he was saying, people don't really realize that he just didn't make the sun go backwards. All of the planetary systems operate in sequence. And so when God was pushing the sun back, everything else had to go back with it. It made sense to me. It maybe don't make sense to you, but it's like everything had to go back. Those tides that had come in had to go back out. The ones that had gone back out had to come back in. It's like all of that stuff that took place. That, that's how big our God is. Amen. He can take what he created. He can take what all of the things that he put on this planet, and he can move them just like people would move pieces on a chessboard. He has the ability 
to do all things and do all things very well. Amen. And nothing gets messed up when he does it. Amen. Now, if mankind tried to do that, we'd be in a mess for sure. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But it's a day, Good Friday is a day, when all the promises of God would come to fruition. The Old Testament prophets were told of a man who would fulfill all the demands of the law that God required. Isaiah chapter 9 gave him such titles as Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Matthew 21, he would be called the Son of David, the Son of the Highest. In the Song of Solomon, it calls him the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley. In Revelation 22 says, he is the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. He would be the supreme sacrifice, the Lamb of God, that takes away the sin of the entire world. Yet all of this world come at a great price to our Heavenly Father. Right. i got to get my glasses. I brought them, but I forgot to grab them. You all okay? learned over time, don't get in a hurry, because then most, most folks won't hear what you said in the first place. Well, I'm, I'm slowing down, okay? But believe me, I'll probably get rolling here in a minute. I, I think about Pastor Chris sometimes. He may start out in the idle, but he'll be pushing the pedal to the metal in no time. You that are here from Monroe Rockets, you've had him at your place, and so you know how he is. Amen? God's only begotten Son would be despised and rejected of men. He would be a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded, I love this, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, we might get healed. No. 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 I just want to see if he's paying attention. <laughs> with his stripes, we are healed. Praise God. The next verse is almost heartbreaking when I read it. Because it says, all we, speaking of us, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of a soul. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of us was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was deceit in his mouth, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He had put him to grief, but thou shalt make his soul an offering. We were remembering that at the taking of the bread and wine this morning. But he shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul, and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul into death, and he, has num he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Isaiah 53 verses 3 through 12. You know, I, I need to stop and say this. It's like your, your whole life has to be centered in the Word of God. Yes. Don't, don't play games with God. Don't think you can pick and choose what 
you want to believe and what you don't want to believe. That's right. Don't think you can put certain scriptures on the shelf and say they're not important. Come on. I've heard people say the Old Testament isn't isn't that important. I want to. I'm here to tell you something. Jesus is on every page, Amen. from right. Genesis to Revelation. Amen. Amen. He was Noah's ark. He was that ram caught in the thicket. He is so many different things to so many different people. He is the tabernacle of Moses. Amen. A lot of people don't realize it, but if you take the cross and lay it over the tabernacle of Moses, every place there was a piece of furniture in that tabernacle was a bleeding spot on the cross. It's amazing how God just set all that up. But they were types and shadows. They were things for us to bring us to Christ. That was the whole deal about the law. It was, it was our schoolmaster, the scripture says, to bring us to Jesus. So aren't you glad for the schoolmaster? But there's a lot of folks that don't even want to go to school. Sure. Come on. Amen. It's sad. It's true. <laughs> My ministry father has taught me so much about the tabernacle. Literally, sometimes I get bogged down in my mind trying to figure it all out. But I'm so grateful that I can see Jesus on every page. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 53 verses 1 through 12, it says this in the New Living Translation. Who has believed our message? To whom will the Lord reveal his saving power? My servant grew up in the Lord's presence like a tender green shoot sprouting from the root in dry and sterile ground. There is nothing beautiful or majestic about his appearance, nothing to attract us to him. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted and with bitter, bitterest grief. He turned, we turned our backs on him and looked the other way when he went by. He was despised and we didn't care, yet it was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrows that weighted him down, and we thought his troubles were a punishment from God for his own sins. But he was wounded, crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. All of us have strayed away like sheep. We have left God's path to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the guilt and sins of us all. He was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep is silent before his shears, he did not open his mouth. From prison and trial, they led him away to his death. But who among the people realized that he was doing what he was doing for their sins? that he was suffering their punishment. He had done no wrong, and he had never deceived anyone, and he was buried like a criminal, and he was put in a rich man's grave. But it was the Lord's good plan. Hallelujah. It's hard for me to grasp it. But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and fill him with grief. You know, I, I heard a message about the order of breaking bread. And the same thing that happened to Jesus, if you come to Christ, is probably going to happen to you. Oh, they may never nail you to a cross, but as it says with the order of breaking bread, first he takes you. Aren't you glad? Come on, smile at me a little bit. Aren't you glad he takes you? And then, with all that is within him, he blesses you. You're going, woo! Man, you get that Gomer Pile syndrome. He liked me. <laughs> but then, then he took the bread and he broke it. You're going to go through some breakings in your life. But it's not to harm you, but it's to mold you Amen. and to make you into what God wants you to be. And then he says, after he breaks you and after he broke the bread, he gave it to them. Can you imagine 5,000 people eating from five loaves and two fish? I mean, my goodness, how in the world did he do that? I was talking to someone, I don't know, recently. And I said, I remember being in Africa. And we were in a refugee camp. Kurt was with us. We were there. And if there was ever a time that I wanted to be able to multiply loaves and fish. It was there, Kurt. It was like these people were so emaciated and so without hardly having clothes 
Oh, we had stuff, but it wasn't a drop in the bucket to what they needed. If I could have multiplied it, I would have. But you know what? Jesus loved those people enough to send us there. That's right. You need to understand that. That's right. And, I, and I'm grateful to the Lord for the opportunity that he gave us to be in that setting. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad that he has to break us sometimes if we're going to be given. I, uh, I don't want to be too long, but you're not going anywhere anyway. <laughs> got nothing pressing. Anybody got to be at work? Okay, praise the Lord. That means I can go till like. You <laughs> know, <laughs> and I'm grateful for the breaking, even though sometimes it hurts. It's 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 almost too much for us to bear at times. And yet through the process of what, see, I want you to know something. Every time you go through something, God is not trying to destroy you. Amen. He's trying to make you better. Yes. yes. He really is. I mean, I remember asking the Lord after I'd had a couple of incidents with my heart. I was laying in the hospital, and I heard the Lord say to me, I'm not trying to kill you. But I am trying to change you. And you know, sometimes you got to go through stuff before you'll change. It's amazing to me how you can go to a funeral home and somebody be dead and everybody already automatically gets religious. <laughs> oh, I love God, I love Jesus. And as soon as the funeral's over and they eat the meal, they forget all about it. Listen, our relationship with Jesus Christ has to be stronger than a meal after a funeral service. <laughs> There's got to be a hunger in us for him. Amen. It said, I will give him the honors of one who is mighty and great because he exposed himself to death. He was counted among those who were sinners. He bore the sins of many and interceded for sinners. He is brought before Pilate, a man who is determined, and you've read the scriptures, to let him go. I was reading it this morning. It was like, he didn't want to do anything. I mean, if he could have got out of it, he would have. Right. He wanted to let it go. Yet the religious leaders, and I want to say this to you, and I'm not trying to be crass here, but sometimes it's the religious people that hinder you from becoming more like Jesus. Because of their tradition, because of the things they're stuck in, because of the things that, you know, mama or grandma or somebody told them, which wasn't even scriptural, but they told you, my, well, if grandma said it, it must be true. Yet the religious leaders that day would have the final word. Let him to be crucified. The scripture said, Pilate therefore took Jesus, scourged him, and the soldiers planted a crown of thorns and put it on his head. I was just in Aruba, and they've got trees there. Um, it's amazing to me how long them thorns are. I have no idea what the thorns look like they stuck on Jesus' head. But I could see the little tributaries in his head and all the little blood that probably run down and soaked his beard and plus the spittle that was on his face from the soldiers mocking and making light and making fun of him. And, and I look at it sometimes and I'm thinking, he did that for me. I don't, I, don't, I don't deserve that. And yet he was willing to do that. It said, Pilate took a scourge to the soldiers, planted a crown of thorns, put it on his head. They put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him with their hands. They de Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified. And they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into the place called the place of the skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and writing, This is Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh unto the city, and it is written in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate said, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier a part, and also therefore among themselves, and 
uh, and his coat. Now the coat was without seam woven from top throughout, and they said, therefore, among themselves, let us not rend it and cast lots for it, whose it shall be. That the scripture, that the scripture, say it one more time, that the scripture Amen. Amen. might be fulfilled, Amen. Amen. which saith, they parted my remnant among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. I heard Bob Duco say this week, I, I, I may get this wrong, and if I do, please forgive me, but he said there are 35,000 evidences of Jesus' resurrection. Wow. There's not another thing out there that has that kind of evidence. Wow. Now, I don't know all of that. I'm just kind of echoing what he said. He's a pretty smart fellow on the radio for a long time. But even if it's half of that, yeah. that ought to be enough evidence to convince you that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Amen. That he was your Savior, that he loved you, that he wants to save you and cleanse you and wash you from all your sin and give you a brand new lease on life. I mean, that, that ought to be enough evidence for all of us. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. That the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garment. I read that part already. Let us not rend it, cast lots at that whose it will be. Whose it will be. They parted my remnant among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things, therefore, the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus. You know, I've read this many times. Now, I missed this, I guess. But it said, there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister. Any of you ever read that? Yeah. Remember it? I mean, yeah. No. It was his aunt. But it leaves her nameless. You don't even tell us what her name is. But Mary had a sister. Maybe they didn't give her name because you know how what's happened with Mary, how that they put her up on a pedestal like she's the savior herself. Maybe if the sister's name would have been in there, maybe they thought both of them were deity. I don't know. Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. What his mother and the others beheld can only be described in Scripture. Scripture says many were astonished at his presence. His visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. They spit on him. They took a reed and smote him on the head. I gave my back to the smiters, my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. They spit in my face and buffeted him. And others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? I mean, you stop and think about all that he was going through to redeem us. I mean, it had been one thing if they just took him out to the cross and nailed him up there and got it over with. But he had to go through hell and high water just to get to that part. In fact, the dissertation from the cross is the most heartbreaking for me personally of all. When he's on the cross there and in Psalm 22 it says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? I mean, he'd never been out of God's presence. He would spend all night talking to his heavenly father. In the garden he'd go, and the disciples couldn't even stay awake long enough to pray with him. But he had a conversation. He never did anything without prayer. That's right. And I'm going to say this to us that are ministered. Myself, Pastor Joe, Chris, Kurt, you know, Juan, whoever's in here that's some type of minister, don't ever do anything without prayer. You get on your face and you seek God and you say, Lord, what do you want me to say? Don't let me get in the way. Don't let me get my personality in the way. Push me behind the cross, Lord, and let me say exactly what you want me to say, even if it hoodwinks the devil. Amen. 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 Why art thou so far from heaven? I can't imagine being that far away. And we all have at times been so far away from God. Yeah. We don't like to admit it. We like to think, man, I just, you know, I got saved and I just been traveling on and I ain't never going to lose sight of where I'm supposed to be going. I'm just one of those, you know, I'm the best there ever was. You start talking like that, God will humble you real quick. I remember my son Joe one time, he was playing in a little league baseball game and he hit a home run. And I went, 
wow, well, that's really, he was all, he, like, I don't know, with, not minors, but whatever the guys are called, the little guys. T-Bob, farm. Huh? Farm. Yeah, the farm. Farm system. Farm. Hit them all over the fence. Well, it wasn't that far, but it was a long way for a little kid. <laughs> he went out the next minute. He's playing shortstop. And he's out there. Little pop up. He missed it. I yelled out from the bench. Well, that's a humbling experience, isn't it? So you can be up here and be down here within a moment. I want my life to be like right here. I want to walk that level plane that I'm not completely in utter despair and I don't think I can stand to live up on the mountaintop because I, I was in a preacher's conference in Texas last week and I am not kidding you, the presence of God so covered us up. I was, I was like, I couldn't stop crying. I was like, I, I didn't want to, I guess. I mean, I was just, God's presence was just covering me and Brother Joe, we got all done. We were going back to the room where we were staying. He goes, well, what do you want to do? I said, I need a nap. <laughs> God's presence will do that to you. You'll need a nap after it. That's why he's going to have to glorify us. Because we couldn't stand it if he didn't. And I'm grateful for the glorification that's coming. Amen? Amen. Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, writing Jesus of Nazareth. I, I, where did I leave off? Let me find it here. Oh, they were spitting on him. They spit in his face, buffeted him. Others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is it that smote thee? The dissertation, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. In Hebrews 5 and 7, it said, Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. In the night season, and am not silent. My tears have been my meat in Psalm 42. Day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, and they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. He was probably remembering back when the children of Israel were led out of the, uh, the land of Egypt and how God just took care of them. Their shoes didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. He gave them manna from heaven. He gave them quail so deep and so thick that it was coming out their nose. He said, they cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. I, I, can, I can't grasp this in my heart. He says this about himself. I'm a worm and no man. A reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake their head saying, He trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him seeing he delighted in him. In Psalm 109, I became a reproach unto them. When they looked upon me, they shaked their heads. Now you have to understand something. It was just a few days before this that they were crying, Hosanna, glory to God in the highest. They, he rode in on that donkey and everybody was praising and putting down palm branches. I mean, last Sunday was Palm Sunday. It was celebrating the time when Jesus came into Jerusalem. And here they are now. There's nobody there that's even wanting to be with him. I just, I look at it, I'm going, I'm a worm. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was on my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. He was forsaken by all. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me around. 
the prosperous who oppose the poor and crush the needy. I am like a man caught in the middle of a stampede. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening, roaring lion. In the book of Job, it says, they have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten upon me up on the cheek reproachfully. They have gathered themselves together against me. God hath delivered me to the ungodly and turned me over into the hands of the wicked. I was at ease, but he hath broken me asunder. He hath also taken me by the neck and shaken me to pieces and set me up for his mark. The mighty ones in the crowd are here, marked by the tearful eye of their victim. The priests, elders, scribes, Pharisees, rulers, and captains bellowed round the cross like wild cattle fed in the fat and solitary pastures of Bashan, full of strength and fury. They stamped out and foamed around the innocent one and longed to gore him to death with their cruelties. Conceive of the Lord Jesus as helpless, unarmed, naked man cast into the midst of a herd of infuriated wild bulls. They were brutal as bulls, many and strong and rejected. One was all alone and bound naked to the tree. His position throws great force into the earnest entreaty. Be not far from me. Have you ever had to pray that prayer? You've been like, Lord... I can't get no help nowhere. I, I'm struggling, Lord. Please. Please don't be far from me. See, see people that don't believe in God, people that don't believe in you, they, they, they don't know how to pray those prayers. They just kind of try to go through whatever they're going through on their own. But I'm so glad that I can call on God, and I know he's going to come to help me. Now, he may not come when I think he should, but I promise you this. As a song I sing, he may not come when I want it, but he'll be there right on time. Every single time I've needed him, he's been there. Amen. 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 I am poured out like water, he says. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a pot shirt, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. I am nothing to them but a bag of rotting bones. They part my garments among them. They cast lots upon my vesture. Be not far from me, O Lord, my strength. Hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog, my darling. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation. Will I praise thee? Hallelujah. Yet the fear of the Lord. Praise him. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye that... Amen. Seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all ye the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred or the afflicted of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation, and I will pay my vow, vow before them that fear him. Amen. Amen. The meat. Are you all okay? Yeah. 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 Said so the meat shall eat and be satisfied. <coughs> they shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kingdoms of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. A seed shall serve him. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come, and they shall declare his righteousness unto the people that shall be born that he hath done this. Amen. And I pray that some of us, that we will declare that what he did, he did it for us. Yes. The Bible said they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Hallelujah. If you think your testimony doesn't have value, try using it sometime. Amen. 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 Don't tell people what God did for somebody else. Tell them what God did for you. Amen. 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 And speak it powerfully and speak it with confidence. Yeah. Jesus saved me out of drugs and alcohol and, and 
motorcycle riding and chasing women and all that. He saved me out of that back in 1973. And you know what? I haven't been perfect, but I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad my name's in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm so glad that God filled me with the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad I speak in tongues. Some people are backward and bashful. They say, I don't want that in my life. I do. I speak in tongues more than I speak in English. My ministry father helped me with it so much while I was gone into this conference. You simply don't realize sometimes when we're praying in tongues where God gets our mind out of the way and he starts praying what we need to pray through us and then all of a sudden we'll start praying for something that we didn't ever intend to pray for. He said what you're actually doing, he says, is you're interpreting your own tongue. I looked at Joe, I said, you don't know how much that just helped me. <laughs> I think we need to pray in the Spirit often, Amen. all the time. Yes. I drive down the road speaking in tongues. Well, now you got on a subject that I'm not real happy with. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was in the book of Acts, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. He said they spake with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. And he said there was in that same country all of those different kind of people that were there. He said everybody that was at the, what I would call the meeting, heard the wonderful works of God in their own language. And they looked up and said, aren't all these guys Galileans? <laughs> Amen. I could say, aren't all of you uh, Woodhavenites? Or Monroeites, or whatever ites you may be, Gibraltarites, and Dearbornites, and wherever you are. We need to get in the spirit more often. Amen. Amen. I should not have to make you worship. I'm going to say that one more time. I should not have to make you worship. In fact, if the truth be known, my ministry father said this too. He said, really, worship ought to have to be moderated. Sure. You ought to have to go, oh, hang on here now. We should get so caught up in Jesus, so caught up in his presence that we'd have to like moderate it. You know, because you couldn't get a whole lot done. But you know what? That wouldn't be so bad either. Everybody just started speaking and talking to God in their own language and next thing you know we're all running around the church and hugging one another and telling one another how much we love each other because isn't that what we're supposed to be doing anyway? Loving one another? That's what Jesus said. You the greater love hath no man than this and a man lay down his life for his friend. He said, you're my friends if you keep my commandments. So I just think it's a good thing. Amen. Amen. Be mad at me if you want to. I don't care. <laughs> I love you. But there's just something I just don't care about. People that don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit have an argument. People that do have the baptism of the Holy Spirit have had an experience. That's the difference. You say, well, brother, weren't you raised a Baptist? <laughs> yeah. But I was in my basement every Sunday morning in the bathroom in the basement where I live. Asking God to baptize me in the Holy Spirit. I'd go to my church. I mean, I'd be so full, I'd like, get up. Man, I'd be in church. The pastor would say, come on, Brother Ronnie, come on up here and sing a song for us. And I'd go up there and sing a song. And he'd get up, hey, anybody here want to come meet Jesus? He didn't, he didn't preach half the time. It was the Holy Spirit would begin to draw people to the Lord. Wouldn't we rather have that prayer? <coughs> I mean, you can hear my message, and you'll forget it by the time you get to your car. But if the Holy Spirit grabs your heart, I promise you, you won't forget yes. that real soon. Right. 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 Hallelujah. I guess I should close. You all okay? Yeah. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel of vinegar and filled with sponge with vinegar, and they put it on hyssop and put it to his mouth. And when Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is.
finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. A lot of people think, well, what does that mean? It is finished. Ever thought about it? You know what it means? Can I tell you? Even though you might already know? What Jesus was actually saying is that I have fulfilled everything that the law of Moses demanded. And now we are no longer under the law of Moses, but we have come into a place of grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank God I don't have to bring up I mean, if you don't think God changes from time to time, I mean, you should have brought a lamb to church with you this morning. But he changed, and he gave us the lamb of God that took away the sin of the world, so I don't have to bring one. Amen. Did I lose you? No. Okay. He says, therefore, because it was a preparation that the body should not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath day, but that Sabbath was the high day, you saw Pilate that the legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and break the legs of the first and of the other which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they break not his legs. But one of the soldiers, I felt this when I read this this morning. But one of the soldiers with a spear, I mean, it was almost like somebody stabbed me when I read it. Pierced his side and forthwith came there out blood and water. I'm no doctor, I'm no nurse, I don't know anything about the medical field too much, but I've heard that the only way for blood and water to come out at the same time is that your heart has to be broken. I thought, his heart was broken for me and you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad it didn't stay that way. Amen. I can't get him out of the tomb today, but there's a part of me that wants to. Hello? Amen. 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 Well, he's out. And he that saw it bear record, and his record is true. And he knoweth that he saith true, that he might believe. And I, I read that scripture, and I'm going, I don't understand that. When I looked it up a little bit, it said, this guy that gave this testimony, he was an eyewitness. These things were done in the scriptures, but should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. And again, another scripture saith, They shall look upon him when they pierced, and after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus. And Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. And there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus and wanted it and then they closed with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden and in the garden a new sepulcher where never a man was laid and they laid Jesus therefore because of the Jews' preparation day for the sepulcher was nigh at hand. That in, as far as I can gather from my own understanding is the story of Good Friday. Meditate upon what he did for you. But I'll also encourage you on Sunday morning to wake up with a shout. Amen. Amen. Honestly, when you get up Sunday morning, I don't care. I, you know, I'm always up early. I'm always down here early. Pastor Chris and I sometimes when we here, we're bubbling over with the presence of God before anybody else gets here. But you know, when, whatever time you get up on Sunday morning, don't get out of bed and say, "Oh me," but get up and say, "This is the day the Lord hath made, and He has risen, and I am alive in Him today, and I'm on my way to the house of God, and I am going to worship Him with all that is within me." Why wouldn't it be great, Fred, if we could get our people to come to church like that? I'm excited. I mean, when they walk in the door, oh, brother, I am so excited to be here. Amen. 
I was excited to come today. I Amen. got here early. <laughs> Get up Sunday morning. Realize it's resurrection morning. I, I never have liked the term, and, and you can take it for whatever. I never have liked the term Easter. It just sounds idly. But I do like the term resurrection morning. Amen. Because that's what happened three days after the crucifixion of Jesus got up. And he's seated today at the right hand of the Father, and he is your mediator. Don't go to anybody else and try to get advice. Go to Jesus. He's got the best advice. He knows how to fix things. Let the word be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. I was talking to a sister the other night, and I, I got to tell you this. I, I just, I had an associate pastor here some time ago. His name was, I don't know, maybe I should tell you. I'm going to tell you. His name is Bob. See him at the funeral home. And Tim's father, we were doing the service and I started talking to him. He goes, and he looks at me and I've been praying for him. He said, I'm on my way back. He said, I was reading Tozer this morning and I've been reading my Bible. He said, and I'm on my, oh, I mean, I will shout. Then I started talking to his wife. And I started talking. She goes, I can't believe how much I didn't know about the Bible. She said, I have been reading my Bible and going to Bible studies. And she goes, I can't believe the difference in my husband. She goes, he is so much different. She said, we sit and we talk back and forth about the scriptures and about the things of God. And she goes, I am so excited. And they were separated. Now God has brought all that back to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we ought to shout. Hallelujah. I'm not looking for him to come to our church, but if he does, he'd be welcome. That's for sure. Amen. Anybody that's fallen down, felt like they messed up, no, the church has kicked him out, come on over. That's right. He'll take you back. If Jesus will take you back, I'll take you back. Amen. And Jesus said, if you come back, he said, I'll change you. I'll make you a brand new creation. I'll, I'll put all that stuff that was on you, I'll put it in the back. It's gone. Great. Hallelujah. Light of the world. You step down into darkness. You open my eyes. Let me.
everybody bow your heads for a moment, please. How many, despite the raising of your hand, are hungry for fresh oil? God bless you. God bless you. I see your hand. A fresh move of God. A powerful move of His Spirit on your own personal life. Yes. We know we want it for our church. We want it for our church family. But listen, if you don't get hungry for it yourself, you'll never be able to impart it to someone else. So in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, let fresh oil be poured out on every person, Lord, that uplifted their hand. And those, Father, that were even kind of bashful to lift their hand. I pray that you would pour fresh oil on them, God, and let your power and your Cover them up, Lord. Fill them. Fill them, Lord. Fill them, Lord, with your divine Holy Spirit. Father, give them what they need to be that vessel that can glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I feel Jesus. I feel
but he needs all of us to be ministering saints. Wherever you're at, whatever your circle of life is, wherever you work, wherever your neighborhood is, that's your ministry. You say, well, I drive a truck. That's your ministry. You're supposed to shine for him while you're driving that truck. You work at Walmart, whatever, whatever mark you want to work at, that's your ministry. God puts you there for a reason. You know, I told you that story recently about the guy that was at work and he was, you know, he walked in and he climbed up in the rafters and he's hanging there. The boss walks in and said, what are you doing? He said, I'm a light. He said, you are an idiot. Get down out of those rafters. Yes, sir. Hangs down, he's on the floor, he looks over one of the other workers, he's packing up all of his tools. He's fixed to go home. He goes, where are you going? He goes, I ain't going to work without any light. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes we need to understand something. We're the light in the place. Yes. You're the light in the yes. place. Shine as brightly as you possibly can. If you need to wipe it off from time to time, wipe off that light. But shine as brightly as you can wherever you're at. You say, bro, I don't know what to say. Sometimes you just got to tell them what God did for you. The Bible said we overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That's all you need. Most of the people that are one to Jesus are one to Jesus by people that have been saved six months or less. Do you know that? It's sad. We get saved, satisfied, and sit down. Now it's time to run this race. If you remember yesterday, I, I can actually say Gene Phillips, he had fought a good fight, he had finished the course, he had kept the faith, and I knew that he was home with Jesus. I like preaching those kind of funerals. I had to preach a funeral recently of a person that committed suicide. I was at a loss. What are you telling the family? Everybody wants to think their loved one went to heaven. But guess what? There's a lot of people that don't. And I know people don't preach on hell anymore, but then if you're going to not talk about it, then you probably just need to take that out of your body. But Jesus talked more about hell than he did about heaven. And he warned us to live for him, walk for him, so that you don't have to go to heaven. And I want to thank him for doing that for me so I don't have to go to heaven. I remember old Barney Bryant said when I said, how are you doing, Barney? He goes, I don't have to go to hell anymore. Jesus saved me. And he was an old drunk that hid whiskey bottles all over the place. But when he came to Jesus, he went and found all those whiskey bottles and broke them. And he says, you know what? If you want to feel good, live good. It really works. If you live right, you feel pretty good. You love the Lord? Yeah. Come on, give me a good shout. You love the Lord? Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you for being a part of our Good Friday service. We'll be here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. Those of you that are watching by Facebook, if the Lord Jesus has spoken to your heart, to your life, please bow your head today and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. Make me a brand new creation in Christ. I confess my sin before you, and I'm sorry, Lord, and I pray that you'll help me to live this life for you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer and you Amen. believe what you prayed, find the church. Go somewhere to yeah. church. You're welcome to come here. We'll invite anybody that wants to come. You can be all messed up, tore up, screwed up. I almost said a bad word. <laughs> but you can be a mess. Take a mess. Yeah. <laughs> God takes our messes and turns them into messages. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. As far as my ask Pastor Chris to dismiss us in prayer. Oh Lord, we're just so, we're full. Thank you. We're just so full of your presence. Amen. So good to be here. I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be. Think of this day and what you did. The great, great price, the sacrifice that was given. The greatest sacrifice that was ever given for mankind. Oh God, and I look around and I see so many people nonchalantly not thinking nothing of it. Oh God, prick their hearts. Oh Lord, may this Sunday weekend be a weekend that 
that people would want to draw closer to yeah, you, Lord. Lord. Lost family members, those that have been drifted away, Lord. Thank you for the reports of those that we've been praying for for so long, and some are starting to get their hearts pricked, God. And oh, God, may there be a, a move in your spirit, not just this week, but all throughout this year, Lord. Yeah. Draw us up. As Pastor said, oh God, make us be people of prayer, people of hunger, people of desire, Lord. Thank you for Monroe Outreach, Lord, and Pastor Kurt and Jan and the worship team, all of them here. Bless their service Sunday. Bless the other ministries, oh God, may it be with your power and your unction and your anointing. God, that lives can be changed. Thank you for our pastor today for the word, for the spirit that was on him, for the time that he spent in your word and in prayer, oh God. And doesn't come any other way but yeah. by that. Lord. Yeah. I thank you for him, Lord. I thank you for this church. All that you've given us, Lord, may we honor it. Be thankful for all that we have. Be a light, as Pastor Ron said, to all those around us that are hurting. So many are hurting, oh God. But you are the answer. You are the answer. Yeah. We want to give you all the praise in Jesus' precious name. God bless you. Have a great afternoon. I, I do want to say, I, I, at the end of this month, we are going to be joining, I believe it's the 28th, uh, Monroe Outreach here. Uh, Pastor Kurt, Jane, raise your hand, Kurt, with you, Mike and Jane. Sister Eva, her husband, Mike here, she's on the worship. We're going to be going out there for a night of prayer and worship and praise. And I, I pray that we'll have a service like we did here today out there, because we're not going to have a concert. Right. We're going there to magnify the Lord and pray and ask God to come. Amen? So, I don't know what you're expecting when we go there, but I'm praying that the Holy Spirit is already there ahead of us. Amen? I know I know that's Pastor Kurt's heart, and I know that's yours, and I don't know what's going to happen out of this. Our brother Jeff's supposed to be joining us there and doing some songs, but that's my heart. So, plan on coming. Uh, we'll talk more about it as the time goes on, but it's an honor to have them here today. Um, and we're going to try to get a couple of vans together, so if you want to go with us, just, we'll be here at the church. And we'll get you down there. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and i got to talk to them and think what we got to bring. So, let's do it. All right? God bless you. Have a great day.